So how could a concept like creationism, which is full of logical fallacies, scientific inaccuracies, and factual errors become so popular in this modern age of information and technological advancement? In the 1920s, a man named Edward Bernays discovered how to use freshly revealed information about the human psyche to develop techniques for controlling the masses and shifting public opinion in whichever direction he desired. Bernays worked for many major corporations and politicians and was the man who literally invented the term public relations. He was the single greatest architect of the modern mass consumer mentality, coming up with brand new marketing schemes such as using celebrities to endorse products or planning PR stunts as a means for advertising. Bernays built his entire strategy based around one simple yet groundbreaking concept. In order to persuade the masses in large numbers, you must appeal to the irrational, emotional nature of human beings, which proved to be a much more effective means of influencing the masses than the old method of providing them with factual information. What Eddie got from Freud was indeed this idea that there is a lot more going on in human decision making, not only among individuals, but even more importantly among groups than this idea that information drives behavior. And so Eddie began to formulate this idea that you had to look at things that would play to people's irrational emotions. Officials and managers of the day thought if you just hit people with all this factual information, they would look at that and say, oh, of course. And Eddie knew that was not the way the world worked. Now let's take a look at some creationists in the media and on the public stage and then we'll move on to the YouTube creationists who parrot them. Creationists employ a strategy of using Bernays' tactic of appealing to the irrational and emotional side of the human condition, and then mix it with false or misleading scientific analogies. See if you can spot them using either of these methods in the following clips. And some believe those who subscribe to intelligent design, that is a deity, created life are being persecuted in America. Well, the issue is that Darwinism, which is a brilliant theory and a, a great, great relic of the age of imperialism in the 19th century, uh, basically said that uh, mankind evolved uh, from apes and monkeys and from cells and so forth. There are many scientists we interviewed, many, who have been expelled from their jobs because they wanted to question the limits, the boundaries of Darwinism and the gaps in Darwinism. And all these Darwinist people, all these atheists can say anything they want. We would just like to have freedom of inquiry and freedom of speech. And is this problem important? Well, is freedom of speech important? Whenever I get these atheists on, the factor, and I, you probably know this, I said, okay, uh, how did it all start? Well, we don't, really don't know yet. Okay, do question. you think, though, that people who uh, believe in creationism are being persecuted in America? Oh, without, there's no doubt about it. We have lots and lots of evidence of it. Hey, you guys haven't figured it out, you secular pinheads. Can't, you haven't figured it out. You had a lot of time. Separation of church and state. The idea, you know, I always think of it like this when someone says, do you believe in, in a design or do you believe in God created the world or is it evolution? I always think, you look at a great bag, right? And you say, a, a bag. bag. And you say, oh my goodness, who's the designer? Not one of us. A, a, a bag like that you can yes. <laughs> Not one of you. Yeah. You look at a pair of shoes you like. You say, who's the designer? I love those shoes. Yeah. They're perfect. They're right. gorgeous. Right. So then for me, it seems odd not to ask the question when you look at things that are so perfect, like a child or the human eye and its complexity. And what think, about things that are not perfect? This? Well, like, how do you think something just popped up? You would never go to, you love Italy. You would never go look at the David and say, oh my gosh, I bet that just... Combusted and came right. There are these na unbelievable chemical coincidences that happen on our world in terms of the development of the earth. And he said if one, if it was off one like hair of, of a pico inch, that it could never have happened, you know, in terms of the Big Bang. I don't think students learn by us withholding information from them. I personally think that the, the life, human life, and the world we live in wasn't created accidentally. I do think that there's a creator. I'm a Christian. I, I do think that God played a role in, in creating uh, not only Earth, but mankind. I don't want any facts or theories or, or, or explanations to be withheld from them because of political correctness. Enter the YouTube creationists. Without realizing the actual technique that's been employed in influencing their thinking, they mimic the exact same behavior, put it on a webcam, 
throw it on YouTube, and deliver it directly to your computer. By believing in evolution, you make certain uh, assumptions, you make certain uh, f finalities, consequences. There are consequences to believing it. If an evolutionist wants to live uh, a total life of debauchery and immorality, of murder, of thievery, of blasphemy, of whatever they want, they can justify it because in the evolutionary worldview, there are no moral absolutes. I could actually walk around with a sledgehammer and break people's skulls, and if evolution were true, there would be no, there would be nothing morally wrong about that. And that's why the children today, the kids today, are grown up doing drugs, uh, you know, and acting they want to act because we're teaching them they came from monkeys. If you tell a child as he's growing up that you are the descendant of an animal, and they start acting like an animal. Why are you all surprised? I mean, it's like, I'm a spoiled little brat and I can explain why because I've been oppressed by God believers. If there wasn't any designer that we should just be a unmanageable lump of flesh, you fail. Right, left, and center. You got science in there creating Agent Orange and, 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 uh, and affecting human beings for their entire life and their children. Thank you very much, science. So every time science supposedly gives us something that is of benefit, you know, science takes away three times as much as it gives us. Thank you very much, science, and all your good that you do for us. Thanks, science, for the atom bomb. You know if the Coca-Cola can is designed, it must have a designer. Behold, the atheist's nightmare. The banana and the hand are perfectly made one for the other. Notice the point at the top for ease of entry. Notice it's just the right shape for the human mouth. And God has even curved it toward the face to make the whole process so much easier. The Bible mentions dinosaurs many, many times. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Come, bing, godless.